Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Miles, along with Hall of Fame coach John Mackler. We're here at Kiker Stadium on the campus of Southeast High School tonight. We're seeing a very dominating performance by the Southeast Seminoles as they shut out the Lakewood Ranch Mustangs uh, 28 to nothing. And uh, a tough night for the Mustangs tonight, coach, but I don't even think uh, with a starting quarterback, Reggie Lindsay, who was out, and then their backup quarterback, uh, Jaron Koleski, who was knocked out of the game, uh, it really would have made much difference. I think Southeast just dominated the game from beginning to end. Yeah, right from the very start, uh, on their first drive and the first touchdown, you could tell that the Seminoles, uh, they, were, they had this game in hand. And, uh, there were too many good players on both sides of the Seminole line, offense and defense, that kept this game going for them. Just to uh, recap the scoring for you, uh, on the first drive of the game, the Seminoles went 80 yards. Brian Poole running it in from 16 yards out. Two minutes and nine seconds into the game to make it 7 to nothing. And then the next drive was a 62-yard a scoring drive. Dyron spiked the quarterback an 8-yard touchdown run. And then early in the uh, second quarter, a 58-yard drive. Brian Poole once again a 1-yard touchdown. And then late in the second quarter, a 62-yard scoring pass. Beautiful pass from Dyron Spite to uh, Calvin Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, not the Calvin Williams of the Millionaires, but uh, his namesake tonight uh, scored a touchdown. So that was all 28 points in the first half. No points scored in the second half, but uh, by that time the game was really much over at halftime. Yeah, uh, outstanding. Pool, uh, you know, you and I talked about who, who we could vote player of the game. There was a couple outstanding players, Pool one, Williams the other. Uh, because Pool scored two of the scores, I think we would give it to him. But uh, Calvin Williams was an instrumental player. Uh, part of that offense and getting the ball moved downfield. Uh, they hit him going across the middle two or three times, and it, you know it was like 15, 20 yards every time he caught yep. the ball. So he was always wide open. He was a good receiver. He found the holes. He found where it was open, and um, uh, Spice got the ball to him. Now I want to mention once again, Reggie Lindsay, the starting quarterback for the Mustangs, out indefinitely with a broken wrist suffered last week against Braden River, and then uh, Jaron Kowalski, the uh, a junior quarterback was knocked out of the game late in the first quarter after running the ball, and he did not come back at all. So Taron Laws, the great running back for uh, the Mustangs, had to take over the quarterbacking duties, and uh, really the defense to just key on him because yeah. he was not a great passer, obviously, yeah. and, and that really shut down uh, any chance the Mustangs had on offense. Yeah, and again, Laws was a running back, not a quarterback. He did the best he could to run that team. But when you become one-dimensional, then the defense on the other side just kind of keys on that. And they keyed up on, on Laws all night long. Uh, it wasn't until late in the fourth quarter when uh, they were starting to utilize a couple of the backs, uh, which took the pressure off of Keys, but I think, I mean, off of Laws. But I think Laws just, you know, basically felt he had to carry the team because he was the only one running it back there. Well, Paul Beckley now 2-0 and as head coach this year for his uh, Seminoles. Great legendary coach here at Southeast High School. And now uh, Sean Trent, uh, head coach of the Mustangs at 1-1. One and one. But a lot of work to do now uh, this week, uh, depending on uh, Kowaleski's condition. Yeah. That he cannot play next week. Uh, they have to install some kind of passing offense or else uh, defenses are just going to key on the run. Exactly. Be the exactly. And it, it's hard when you get two quarterbacks go down. Um, I don't know how many quarterbacks the... Uh, uh, Mustangs have. I noticed that on the um, on the Seminole side, they had uh, three or four quarterbacks. A couple of them played offense or defense on, in other positions, but they were pretty full with quarterbacks. But then again, uh, I didn't see how many that um, the uh, Mustangs had. And if, if they only had two, then you know, hopefully one of them can come back. And if he can't, they're going to have to do something. We'll be right back here next Friday night at uh, Kiker Stadium at Southeast as the Seminoles host the Manatee Hurricanes. That's, That's a, a great uh, local rivalry here in yeah. Manatee County, and we look forward to that. They'll be on the air with you at 725 at uh, DougMilesMedia.com via Ustream, so we look forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be a good game. Manatee started off real good. They uh, they had a uh, their first game on ESPN, uh, really did well in that game. Then they went up to uh, Pennsylvania. I Pennsylvania, think right? Pittsburgh area. Yeah, Pittsburgh area. Played a team up there, beat them, coming back down here. Uh, we don't know what they did tonight, but they were expected to win tonight's game. Uh, theoretically, the uh, Manatee could come into the stadium with a 3-0 record and it's going to be a tough haul for uh, the Seminoles because the Seminoles are good but uh, Manatee is just a powerhouse so it's going to be an interesting game to see how the Seminoles can handle that power offense. Final score once again tonight from Southeast High School, the Seminoles 28, Lakewood Ranch nothing. We'll have the scores for you of all the high school games around Saratoga Manatee right after this.
The Sarasota Millionaires are more than just a football team. Giving back to the community is what makes the Millionaires an important part of Sarasota. Entering its fifth year, the Millionaires have established several community service programs, including Thanksgiving meal and Christmas package deliveries, visiting local schools, and spending time visiting the elderly. The Sarasota Millionaires will be holding tryouts for the upcoming season beginning Sunday, September 5th, and each Sunday evening throughout the month. For more information on registration, call 941-487-7444 or go to sarasotamillionaires.net.